MTLS or Mutual Transport Layer Security is a security protocol where both the client and server mutually authenticate each other before establishing a connection. It builds on the standard TLS protocol which is already widely used to secure internet communications like HTTPS. While TLS ensures the server is trustworthy, MTLS adds an extra layer of security by verifying the client as well. But is this additional layer of security necessary? In this video, we are doing a deep dive into MTLS, how it works and when you might need it. Before we dive into MTLS, let's take a step back and understand how TLS evolved from SSL. SSL or Secure Sockets layer introduced in the 1990s by Netscape was designed to secure HTTP connections, creating what we now call as HTTPS. SSL provided server-side authentication with the certificates, but it had vulnerabilities, leading to its eventual replacement by TLS. TLS or Transport Layer Security launched in 1999 became the de facto standard for encrypting communications over the web. With enhanced security mechanisms, it secured millions of online interactions. TLS operates using public key cryptography with a public-private key pair. The server typically has a TLS certificate with these keys, but the client does not. Here is a simplified version of how the TLS handshake works. The client connects to the server. The server presents a TLS certificate. The client verifies the server certificate against a trusted certificate authority, confirming the server's identity. And once validated, both client and server exchange information over the encrypted connection. Important thing to note is the server certificate here is issued by a certificate authority or CA, watching for the server's identity. If an attacker tries to pose as the server, they won't have the legitimate private key or a valid certificate, and the client will detect this. For a deeper dive into how this process works, check out my video on HTTPS. Now, while TLS is designed to protect against man-in-the-middle attack or MITM attack, it's not foolproof. The security relies heavily on the integrity of certificate authorities or CS. A compromised or malicious CA could issue fraudulent certificates allowing an attacker to impersonate a legitimate server. For example, there have been real-world cases where hacked CAs issued false certificates, enabling attackers to execute successful MITM attacks. Other factors like server misconfigurations, DNS spoofing, or BGP hijacking could also make TLS secured connection vulnerable despite the use of certificates. For example, when an attacker redirects traffic to a malicious server that presents a valid but fraudulent certificate. In this case, the client might not even realize it's talking to the wrong server, especially if the attack is well orchestrated. More importantly, in a regular TLS, if an attacker poses as a legitimate client, the server does not have a way to verify the client's identity. And that's where MTLS comes in. It's designed for situations where both the client and server need to authenticate each other, ensuring secure communication in environments where mutual trust is critical. So in regular TLS, only the client verifies the server's identity. With MTLS, both the client and server present their certificates, ensuring mutual trust. For example, in banking systems or internet service-to-service -service communications, mutual trust between both parties is crucial to avoid data leaks or unauthorized access. MTLS minimizes the risk of an attacker intercepting or modifying communication by ensuring both sides are legitimate. In microservices architecture especially, services communicate frequently over the network. With MTLS, each microservice must authenticate itself to any other service it communicates with ensuring that only trusted services interact. For example, in platforms like Kubernetes, MTLS is often used to secure communication between internal services. MTLS also helps in meeting strict regulatory requirements in industries like healthcare, such as HIPAA, and in finance with PCI DSS by ensuring data is encrypted and communication is authenticated at both ends. In MTLS, both the client and server use certificates, which adds few extra steps to the process, which have marked them in green. So here, the client connects to server. The server presents its TLS certificate. The client verifies the server certificate, and then the client presents its TLS certificate. Server verifies the client certificate, and then the server grants access. And if all checks pass, the client and server exchange data over the encrypted connection. Now, while this extra handshake adds some complexity, it ensures that both parties are trusted, making it ideal for secure environments like microservices or zero trust networks. With the rise of microservices and distributed systems, MTLS became more widely adopted, particularly in cloud-native environments like AWS, GCP, and Azure. It also fits perfectly into zero-trust security models where no implicit trust is assumed, even for internal network communication. If you are interested in learning more about zero-trust security or ZTS, do check out my video covering its key principles. To wrap it up, 
TLS is perfect for everyday use case where securing communication and authenticating the server is enough, like on public websites. It provides solid security without the need for client authentication. However, when mutual authentication is required, like in internal systems, API, or microservices, MTLS adds the extra layer of security. While MTLS does increase complexity due to certificate management, it's essential in environments that prioritize zero trust and mutual authentication. Ultimately, both TLS and MTLS offer robust encryption, but MTLS is best suited for scenarios where both sides of the connection needs to establish trust. And if you want to dive deeper into zero trust security or other security concepts, be sure to check out my playlist in the description.